Okay, item 23. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, I hope everyone has been able to connect to the YouTube stream uh, for the PM part two session for, this, uh, for the District of Scarborough. So we are going to start with item 23. Item 23 is 153 Oak Ridge Drive. Um, in an application and has three variances before us today. I'm going to call upon the owner and the agent, so John Amara and Pamela Hills. Okay, uh, thank you for your patience. I would request that you turn off your YouTube stream because there's some feedback and, and noise in the background. So please stay with us for a moment. Paul Noons, are you with us, Paul? Paul? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul, could you please confirm if you would be speaking today or are you here just to support and observe? Just to support. So you may not be speaking then? Is that what I take? No. Okay. All right. Thank you for confirming that. Uh, John Selk, the rear neighbor in opposition. Are you with us, John? Hmm. I see John is not there. We're checking again. So John, if you're listening in and if you wish to connect, uh, please note that we are uh, discussing item 153 Oak Ridge Drive. And if you wish to connect and speak with us, you have a few minutes to join. And, and uh, when you join in, we, we will let you in. Thank you. So now uh, moving to John Emeral and Pamela Hills. Um, thank you for your patience today. Could you please turn off your YouTube stream or any other device that you've logged in? I believe it's all on. Okay, that's better now. It's better now. Okay. John? I apologize for that second device going because the battery is dying on the main computer. We've been on it all day, so I apologize for that. Makes sense. Okay, no, no problem. I'll give you a minute to, are you ready? When you're ready, let me know. You ready, John? Yes, I am. I'm sorry. I thought you heard me. No, no, no problem. Okay, yeah. Uh... May I speak? Yes, please, go ahead. We were just waiting to confirm. So we have your application. We have reviewed it. Uh, would you like to make a presentation um, at this time, or would you just dive right into the questions? Right, in, right into the questions, please. <laughs> okay, I know. It's been a long day for you as well, uh, waiting. So uh, members of the committee, we have John and Pamela. Um, any questions for John on this application? Member McCauley, please go ahead. Um. John, you are building a very large two-story uh, detached garage. What's the purpose for that garage? Uh, the second story is strictly for storage. The garage is very narrow, and I can park my truck and boat in there for the most part, is what I was hoping for. Okay, so it, it, basically it's for your car, for your boat, and for storage. Is that correct? Oh, it's strictly for storage, my dear. Would you have any concern with, uh, if we approve this application, stating that it has to be built in accordance with the uh, plans that you have provided for your front, back, and side elevations? No, the elevations are not the same. The elevations are not the same as what you're proposing? No, not the change. No, they're, yeah. so, they're gonna stay, they're gonna remain the same. Okay, all right. I, I think our concern is that uh, with a, a large storage uh, facility, we want to make sure that that is what it's used for and doesn't uh, morph into something else. Okay, that's all my questions. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Member McCauley. Uh, any, any, you, yes, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to build on Anne, uh, Member Anne's um, questions. 
uh, typically, you know, um, you, you saw the note from the community association about plumbing. Typically, through the building permit process, you may be asked for a declaration saying that you will not provide any plumbing or any water services within that uh, structure. So just be advised that that may, um, may come up. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, any questions? Uh, any other questions for John? Or can, can we just move to John just to confirm if he has any anything? Okay. So, John, you heard the questions. You answered some of them. You heard Member Amy's comment. Um, anything you would like to add? No, we've been here 25 years, and uh, the garage is uh, starting to get very decrepit. So it's just time, and a little bigger would help me out. That's about it. Okay. Any any comment on the connection to servicing or anything? You understand that? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for that. Uh, member, if there are no further comments or questions, maybe take the matter into committee. Okay. I s don't hear or see anything, so we take the matter into committee. Members of the committee. The other neighbor. Did the other neighbor log in, or we keep we're still without him? That's a good question. I uh, will check with staff. The neighbor, uh, John Selk, has not connected. I have confirmed with staff. Thank you for, for that reminder. Okay, moving along. Comments? Questions? Okay, if there isn't anything, then maybe have... Oh, member, member Saeed. Madam Chair, this is just a comment. Um, I have my reservation that uh, even if the should the committee consider to approve that, uh, this is a very big garage, um, um, as far as the size is concerned, the width is concerned, and even the height, the partial height is concerned. Uh, keeping in view the, the Oak Ridge uh, Drive characteristic of the street, uh, it should not be uh, a precedent for the other properties, you know. If we are going to approve such a big garage, and tomorrow if the other properties start coming in, giving the same precedent, so, this may not be fitting it into the characteristic of the street. It's just a comment. Okay, no, fair enough. The comment has been heard. Members, any further, uh, any further comment? I would have to disagree. Um, you don't really see most of it from the street. Um, you wouldn't necessarily see how, what makes this garage big is its length, right, its depth, but it doesn't actually impact any of the rear yard setbacks. And from the street, all you're going to see is what a standard detached garage looks like. Um, that being said, my main concern about the size of it is that if it's going to become an accommodation, is, which is what we don't want, but I think through the building permit process, we can be pretty sure that it won't be uh, converted because they're going to ask for a declaration and we're going to tie it to the plan. So that satisfies what I think is my concerns and what I hear Anne's concerns are. So in terms of a, a precedent, I, 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 don't, I, I don't really have a concern with that because it meets all other requirements in terms of coverage and setbacks and rear, like, yeah. So I'm, I'm, okay, to, I'm okay to support the application. Okay, thank you very much. And, and, I, and I echo your comments. If, should there be ever a second suite um, contemplated for the structure, it would have to go through the necessary approvals process and permissions required, and at that time, it, could, it would be taken care of. As of today, what's before us is a garage, an unserviced garage, uh, and the variances before us are uh, three, the three variances, and that's what we have to assess on. But I do echo, but I do, we do realize uh, Member Said's comments as well in terms of setting a precedent in, in that neighborhood, not so much the streetscape, but the, just the neighborhood. Okay, having said that, any any further comment? And I think we've had a good uh, hearing on this one. Have a motion, please. Member okay, McCauley. Go ahead, Anne. Madam Chair, I recommend approval of this application as a, a variance, subject to uh, the condition that the building uh, shall be built in accordance with the designs in front of us for the front, back, and side elevations specifically page 231 to two, or sorry, 931 to 934 as shown on the agenda. And there's a condition of urban forestry? 
there is a condition. There is a condition on carbon forestry. There is? Yes. Yes, yes, my note is there's an urban forestry condition. And subject to the urban forestry. Okay, could you please specify which plan or drawing you would you're you're trying to con attach to? I'm um, asking uh, to be in conformity with the building elevation, front, rear, and both side elevations. So front, and side, for back. Greater clarity. Okay. That's page two ninety. That's page nine thirty one to nine thirty four in our agenda. Okay, fair enough. We we found those drawings. Okay. May I have a seconder, please? Member M? I'll second that motion. Okay. I'll second that motion, Madam Chair. Thank you. Member M seconds the motion. All in favor of this motion. Motion is carried. The application has been approved, subject to the condition that it be tied uh, to plans, uh, sorry, to the four elevations of this building. Drawings that have been submitted uh, in the agenda package for the committee. Thank you. We now move to item number 27. Item 27 is for 30 Cornell Avenue. And we have an application for minor variance and with it are nine variances. May we do a roll call for Jeffrey and Julie Hum as the owner. Yes, we're here, Madam Chair. Thank you, please stay with us. Um, John Surmilic or Surmilic. Yes, uh, good evening, Madam Chair and committee members. Good evening, sir. So just uh, just wait, hang in there for a few minutes. Uh, Austin Merricks is in support as a registered speaker, but staff advises me that he has not signed in. So Austin Merricks, if you're listening in and if you wish to speak, uh, please sign in. We, we will be here for a couple of minutes for a few minutes on this application. George Tipton. Yes, I'm here, Madam, uh, and Madam Chair and members. Could you please speak a bit louder? Yes, I'm here, Madam Chair and members. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you for your patience. Please uh, stay for a few more minutes and until we get to it. So, uh, Jeffrey and Julie Hum, at this point, uh, would you like to uh, make a presentation to the committee on your application or are you prepared to take questions from the committee? I'd like to make a presentation. Okay, sir, go ahead. You have five minutes. Okay, I know it's been a long day for all of us. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, thank you for taking this time. Um, in regards to our uh, plans for a, a minor variance, um, we are seeking to have our existing two-story house uh, um, renovated into a 2.5. Um, this would allow us to have a multi-generational home uh, and as a member of, uh, um, as a veteran in the Canadian Forces and a serving member for 21 years, often being uh, uh, deployed in a way from my family, uh, having that family support, uh, especially during a pandemic is uh, invaluable uh, and we hope to stay in this community. Um, we seek these minor variances and we uh, hope that you will approve them. Uh, attached are various homes, um, um, various homes, in the community that uh, have these same variances. Also, we have uh, supporting documents uh, from 18, I believe I submitted 17, but I have 18 neighbors, um, letters of support from uh, neighbors who support our um, vision strongly and our renovation goals. Uh, to our knowledge that these minor variances uh, are not setting a precedent, um, with regards to it. So speaking on the uh, the um, variances themselves, uh, the side setback number one and uh, number eight, uh, the side setback, uh, as we are keeping the existing foundation, the front and side, the north side of this, uh, we're hoping, um, we're hoping to keep this cost down. So we're keeping the existing north side of this uh, uh, side setback. Uh, with regards to the eaves, uh, there are currently no eaves on this. Uh, we will be seeking to have uh, uh, eaves for water and range management and making sure that it is does not uh, affect our neighbors who also do support us in this build to the, the north of us. 
um, in regards to the number two, the area, uh, expanding our property. Um, I have a four car driveway. I don't have four cars. I'm moving, uh, I'm expanding this to the south uh, so that uh, we're taking up the area and not encroaching on our neighbors who also support us uh, at the 1.2 meter mark. Uh, we are also moving, uh, having the addition and uh, moving the area to the back. Um, so I believe that 33% is the um, allowed. We are asking for a variance of 11% um, in regard uh, to to take up our own property without encroaching on the rear or sides of our neighbor. Um, in regards to the coverage, uh, it it will obviously uh, take up a larger footprint um, on this property. Uh, I've shown in in my supporting buildings list that are there are massive houses in my area. Uh, for example, if you look at page um, let's see uh, page nine thirty four Dodge Road. Um, it's a massive two garage uh, property, uh, two story um, in itself. Okay. Sorry, I'll continue on. Um, once again, there are many properties within, uh, sorry, there are many homes within this uh, street that have these variances. And if you're on your street, on your screen right now on page four, uh, 125, 128, and 130 are all examples of uh, three-story um, buildings, uh, uh, three-story uh, homes on my own street. And so I'm only interested in, uh, in seeking uh, what's already there. Um, in regards to uh, the height, um, that's, I am seeking the 2.5 to kind of match the other homes in this area. Uh, this uh, regards to number five. Sorry, five Jeffrey. Uh, sorry for interrupting. I just want to remind you, you have 30 seconds left, so you may want to start wrapping up your comments. Yes. And regards to the side walls of this property, uh, the cell side is in regards to uh, just having the staircase of my home so that we can access the third story or 2.5, the attic room. Um, and on the other side, so that is a little bit bigger. We hope that these are minor in, um, and that you accept these. Okay. It's been a long day. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, long or not long, we each each application has to be reviewed and considered carefully. So uh, you'll certainly do justice to your application. Um, members of the committee, any questions for Jeffrey? M Member M, please go ahead. Hi, Jeffrey. I had saw in your materials that you submitted, you had a checklist of all of the various uh, different variances in the area that were similar to your application. And I noted variance number seven was blacked out through the whole column. Could you just speak towards why that, that information was missing? I just, I don't know. Was it, am I to read that there was none or, or is that information just not available? No, uh, great, uh, great question. Uh, that was uh, uh, in regards to a deck. And like you mentioned uh, previously, uh, the we would propose a bigger deck of uh, eight square meters. We're not seeking that, um, that uh, exception. We are eliminating back to the four. And I understand your concern of us encroaching it uh, later on. That is not uh, what we're gonna do. And if, you know, if you wanna release, alleviate that possibility we can even extend the upper so the upper portions of the 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 home so that it cannot ever be extended if that makes sense to you so i thought variance number seven had to do with the two stories versus the three stories um i believe when there so the letter that i received uh, I am going out uh, after the exceptions, or sorry, um, from the notice uh, certificate. Um, uh, okay, because when I look at this chart, it look it, it says variant seven, but then in variant seven in the public notice, it's it's relating to the number of stories. So that's what I 
I had gotten confused, so I thought there was no information on, on the number of stories. No, my apologies. Uh, it was in regards to our initial uh, zone uh, certif cert certificate that uh, I was working off of all these and not the uh, letters that uh, uh, the committee submitted. I understand. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Member M. Any, any further questions, uh, committee members? Member McCauley. Oh, and, and after Member McCauley will be Member Saeed. Member McCauley, you had a you had raised your hand. You had a question. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's a question to the applicant. Uh, we have item number eight, which is uh, a proposed third floor platform will have an area of eight point six four meters squared. Are you still looking for that variance? No, no ma'am. Uh, I believe um, there wasn't. No, ma'am. Um, we are still proposing to have just a four meter deck there. Okay, so basically you're withdrawing that. that okay. So that variance is being withdrawn then? For number eight. Yes, yes. Okay. So I'm going to read it so that everyone's clear. Okay. Variance number eight is that the maximum permitted area of a platform at or above the story is four meters square. The proposed third floor platform will have an area of 8.64 meters squared. And you are redrawing that variance? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay. Member McCauley, any, any question? Thank you. Okay, so committee members, um, when, uh, variance number eight has been withdrawn. Any further questions? I, I Katrine, do you mind putting up the screen, please? It's, sorry, no, that's okay. Okay, I, I just want to see hands raised. I don't see any hand raised there. So, okay, we are going to now move to um, John. John is the designer. John, would you be speaking to this application? I can, and uh, I, I just want to echo once again uh, Jeff and Julie's sentiment about the uh, proposal. I did the drawings. Um, I, I obviously uh, I stand with with uh, Julie and uh, and Jeff on them. I, I just wanted to state that you know we're not seeking anything precedent setting here, uh, as, as Jeffrey has alluded and shown in his uh, presentation. We are within the uh, you know the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not looking to seek any uh, relief or variances outside of that. Um, the, you know, we, we consider the, uh, the proposal and uh, the variances uh, minor in nature. Um, you know, it is desirable and in keeping with the neighborhood and uh, as well in the uh, general intent and purpose of the official zoning uh, plans. Um, I can go back and touch on the points that Jeff did. Uh, I think he did a, 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 a fair enough job. When you look at some of the height requirements, uh, mm -hmm. you know, four of them uh, speak to uh, the story being uh, a three-story where we try to keep it down to two and a half story with a, with a dormer on each side. Uh, you know, the repetition and duplication of the Scarborough zoning bylaw uh, affecting the nine meter setback is repeated twice. Uh, and then the other uh, requirement for the height obviously affects the uh, size because of the the, uh, the dormers having to be elevated a little higher to make room for the eaves there. Uh, the other conditions with respect to the side setbacks, uh, it, we're, we're, we're trying to keep the, the north foundation wall uh, mm -hmm. and just build to the south of it and to the back. Uh, you know, and, and if you total what the required setbacks for the property is of uh, 0.9 twice, which is to me is, is uh, 1.8. In total, we're providing 1.4 in the way of setbacks, which is just under 0.4 of the requirements uh, needed to, com to, to comply. Uh, once again, I, I don't s see that we're asking for uh, uh, anything too precedent setting. Uh, I, I would 
I, 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 I hope the committee sees it and, and, and uh, rules in favor of, uh, of uh, Julie and Jeff. And, uh, you know, their intent is to stay in the community. They, they want to raise a family. They, you know. Uh, Can I ask a question, John? I, I remember hearing that you said something about being able to maintain the ease. That was point three. So I just wanted to clarify from the applicant, does that mean he's going to be withdrawing variance number nine? I, I do uh, recall hearing that. Well, no, we, we still are going to build uh, at the point two mark uh, at where where the setback is, so that that the ease uh, variance would stay. So for a zero. Uh, uh, well, I guess can, the building can itself we is get point the, two. The applicant back as opposed to the. Um, just, just, yeah, so it's just a matter of uh, clarifying that. I just want to clarify, because I, did I not hear that right? Yes, yeah, so currently there are no eaves on the uh, north side of my property. So we are putting in eaves uh, so that it, we will have proper rain management, uh, but they will not be the point three. We are interested in having the uh, a zero set for the eaves, if that makes sense. And there are other properties within our area that have side, no side eaves, but we will have eaves, if that makes sense. Yeah, so the variance stays as is. Yes. Okay, sorry, that just confused me. Okay, all right, any further questions? Oh, sorry, I, um, I know John, you were uh, trying to wrap up. Um, will you take like 10, like 30 seconds to wrap up your comments? Uh, yeah, and, and just in closing, you know, once again, uh, I, I think we meet the four conditions of the uh, of, of 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 the committee when uh, when we when you look at it that the applications is you know they are minor in nature uh, they are desirable and within the development of the area and the neighborhood we are keeping within the purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw and as well of uh, the intent uh, of the official plan. Um, okay. And and and, and that's. Basically, uh, all we would like to say. Okay, thank you so much for that. Uh, concluding remarks. Um, I would like to move forward and see if um, I know. I know Austin had uh, Austin had not connected. Okay, so he was in support, anyways, for record. George Tipton. Yes, I was wondering if you could quantify a three-story, because I don't know of any three-story houses in the neighborhood. Okay, so George, please state your name and address, sir. George Tipton, 175 Audrey Avenue, Scarborough, Ontario, Mary 1 Nancy, 2X9. Okay, no, thank you for, for that. Uh, so certainly we will um, have the applicant respond to your question, but I would like to hear from you what your concerns are with this application. I have no issues with the north, uh, the south, and the east. But they back on to um, the west side to my backyard. So even as it is right now with the large deck they have there, I really don't have much privacy. Now they're going to come even further past that with a deck extending out even further. And that, that level, their second level is at my ground level. So it's a split level in the back. Mm. So that area, they'd pretty well be right on top of me. So I won't have any, any 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 privacy expectation of privacy that's my concern okay carry on i i i'm i'm honestly bewildered that this is even being proposed on the back end of the house again uh, it is so close. It'll be so close to me on the back side. It's just, again, I won't have any expectation of privacy at all. It's just way over and above. Hmm. I mean, when you look at the, the items here, some of them are, you know, in expectation bylaws number two, like we're doubling up on some of these things here. Okay, so, so I have to agree with this, Saber. I just feel that there's a lot of things that are quite in excess um, with these variants. Uh, let's leave that for a moment. I just want to hear um, George um, un until he's concluded, and then we will certainly make those yeah, comments. And again, I, yeah, I understand 
you know, wanting to grow and grow his family. I know him and I'm happy for him. Don't get me wrong, I have two young children myself. But at the same token, it's just the backside. It's just as it is now, It's too, that deck is too close. Hmm. And they're going to go beyond that. I mean, it's so, it'll be so, there's no precedent on the street like that. There's no other buildings that back onto each other that are that close to one another. There isn't at that level. Okay, so I hear you Sometimes have cons- are, are maybe. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. So I hear, I was just trying to sort of, um, understand that you have concerns with almost all the variances given the magnitude of the variances that are being requested and in particular the the proximity of that deck to your property and the lack of privacy correct yeah it's actually just the just the the west side of the property the south side whatever you know build as far across as you can height wise not really that concerned about it but again on the back side because it's a split level like it was at the same level, I wouldn't see them. But as it is, the second level on the back end of the house is above me. So they can see everything I can do, I'm doing in my backyard. And I spend a lot of time in my backyard with my children and my family. And now it's even going to be closer. Again, if it was the same levels as mine, is like a not a split level on the back, they have three levels on the back and two on the front. I have two on the back and two on the front. So by, my point being is that main level that we're speaking about that we're gonna be spending 90, majority of their time will be, that, that is gonna cause, there won't be, I won't have any privacy. I really won't. But that's my concern. It's okay. just too close to me. It's too big on the end, on the, on, on the back end. I mean, they only have like 12 feet, I think, from the end of the deck to my to the property line, my property line. Okay. Um, I, I can't believe this is even being considered, honestly. Well, every, every homeowner has the right to submit an application, uh, of and, course, of course. and then the committee I, I, and the committee considers those applications. So they're, everyone's well yeah. within their rights. So um, I think, yeah. So I think I've, we've kind of captured your comments. Um, could you have the screen back, please? Um, members of the committee, any questions for George before I w I ask Jeffrey to res provide a response or rebuttal? Okay, I see none. All right, I'm going to move on to um, Jeffrey or John, whoever wishes to speak. And, well, I guess Jeffrey, um, as the owner, would you like to respond to the comments that you just heard? Uh, yes, I would. And I understand that George's concerns. However, there are precedences in my area. If you do go to Google and a topographical view, you can see that my neighbor, direct neighbor to the north, actually has an extension that extends uh, to the same area. And 20 Cornell, uh, they have a rear addition uh, that extends to even further than what we're proposing. Will we have a deck? Yes, we'll have a small deck um, used to eat, you know, dinner or have lunch. But primarily, uh, we are not going closer than we are allowed. If we were greedy per se, then I would move it all the way back and have a huge nine kids if I was allowed. But um, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm only asking for uh, what's permitted. Well, you're asking for variances to what is permitted. Yeah, right? I hear you. So, yeah. so I'm asking for uh, what has been already sought, like what other people have already. Um, um, okay, uh, okay, you meant others. Okay, but but remember, each case is specific to its own merits and advent, you know, and then characteristics. Yes, so, so I'm looking at the application, and there are variances. Uh, you're seeking relief to a few variances, whether they're minor or, or oh, that's, that's separate, but there is re relief on um, for, for eight variances now that you've removed variance number eight. So uh, I think uh, George was concerned about the privacy and the proximity of the deck to his property. Any comments on that? I understand that, like I said, he does have concerns um, uh, 
it's hard to address those privacy issues. We have the same thing. Oh, um, sorry. We actually don't have a three story. It's because of the, the geography of the land. Uh, we, it does slope down. Um, his house is actually taller than uh, or the same size and taking up the, the same width. It's the same property size. It's just because of the, uh, the, the ground that it slopes down that uh, he feels that we look down into him. Um, uh, okay. I cannot, uh, I cannot refute how he feels, right? I can only say that uh, we're not interested in encroaching uh, close to that property line uh, as much as um, that we can't. So basically you're taking the existing ground floor plan and you're making that addition correct, right? It's existing footprint, more or less. Yes, the existing footprint of what we have, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm not understanding that. How is it the existing footprint? So, um, yeah. I thought it's, an, it's, an, it's extends beyond what's existing, it shows. I have a rear deck and I'm be moving the house to that position. It's just shy. No, you're still moving it beyond that deck. I'm looking at your plans and it's still a, a few feet beyond that plus, plus another 2.3 meters for the actual deck. And then I don't understand your comment about your neighbor being lined up with the neighbor because as per your survey and your drawing, you're extending beyond your neighbors. So I, I'm just, what you're saying isn't aligning to what I'm seeing in your package. Maybe and to even, even just the building footprint drawing that was up on the screen, you'll see that the building footprints are completely aligned right now. And what you're seeking is in addition to, but you know, my issue mostly is actually the opposite of, of George. I, I just think that overall this, I mean, you're, you're asking for double the permitted floor area. You're asking for more than 10% lot coverage. You're going down to less than like 0.5 of a meter on all sides. You're literally pushing the envelope on every single side. Side. So it just begs the question, is this an overdevelopment of the lot? You know, like truly you're, you're basically gonna be right on the lot line on both sides. And I, I, I just, I think that, you know, it doesn't have to be as large as it is. And, you know, you're asking for actually more than really what should be acceptable in terms of a minor variance. Okay. All right. Thank you for those comments. Uh, we need to keep moving and to be more efficient here. Uh, Katrine, can I have the screen back, please? Thank you. Okay. Members of the committee, any further questions? Okay. Uh, just making the last call. Um, before we take the matter into committee, any closing remarks, Jeffrey? Um, no. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, members of the committee, we take the matter into discussion now or into committee. Uh, no further discussion with the applicant. Any internal comments? Any deliberation? Member Saeed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I will echo with uh, Member M what she said. Uh, in fact, it is uh, over development. Even if the variance number eight is taken away, still, uh, in all the terms, all the other variances, I believe, um, they are not the minor variances. And uh, uh, Mr. Jeffrey was trying to, to convince the committee, giving the reference of the precedent, which is uh, in the street or in the area. But again, it's a reminder that we cannot go to the precedents and uh, we have to consider this case as a unique case, as a unique application. And we, uh, we cannot uh, grant the approval simply because the other people have done something wrong or something that we need to do in the past. So I will echo with the uh, member and that uh, it's an overdevelopment. But can I make a comment here? You, you're seeing this in a you're, you're seeing this development or proposed development on this particular site only. And if you look at the precedent that has already been set in this area all along Cornell, and it's not about if that, that person got it, why can't I? I'm not even thinking, I'm not even going that way. But I think the precedent has already been set. There are many properties or many houses on the street that are 
of, of this character, of this, uh, the size of the development. So I'm not sure if the committee is considering that in their, um, in their um, analysis of this application. There's already precedent set on the street. There's, there's multiple houses there. And if you saw the presentation material that was submitted by the applicant, and again, um, I've, I've done my own analysis here as well and looked into it, there's already um, tons of houses in that area that are- But to the same level though, to 44%, and 1.1 times, like all of them together. Like I did see some of them had a mixture, but not necessarily all nine of these variances. And I mean, to go to zero and to go to 0 0.2 on both sides, is it on both sides or is it just on one side? I can't speak to that, um, but what I was trying to sort of um, direct the committee's attention was that more or less a similar type of development has already sprouted in that area. Whether it mimics exactly what's being proposed, I'm not sure. I've not, we don't, I don't have that analysis in front of me. But what yeah, I can I see, that yeah, but, but I what I can see is there's already, there, yeah, there's already transition happening. The, the neighborhood is changing. And of course, we all know neighborhoods I, I agree, are never similar. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. But I just feel that this particular application, looking at this particular application in this particular lot, I do feel that 44% and more than double the, the lot area for FSI, in my opinion, is a little too much. You know, I, I don't know, I, I did look at all of the materials that were submitted, I did, I looked at all of the pictures. And for the most part, I'm not that concerned with the number of stories, there was a lot of two mm -hmm. and a half stories. Where my concern comes in is the overall lot coverage and not having much area still remaining in the rear yard. Maybe if you remove the rear deck period, maybe I would feel a little bit better. But in, in general, I feel like the overall lot coverage is high. I mean, we just denied something in this agenda, much, much less than that. And I just, I, I just feel consistency. Like okay. This doesn't up to me seem minor in terms of the overall coverage and the overall FSI. And that I don't like that it's 0.2, like it's just very squeezed. Um, okay. I just, I feel like it's too much. And if they were to scale it back just a little bit on all sides, I could support it. Like I could go in with 40%, you know, but like 44% is more than 11% over. It, it, it doesn't to me appear minor. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I think those were, those could have been good questions for the applicant, but we've sort of passed that bridge now. Um, we are in the committee mode now. Um, the chart that was demonstrated by the present, by the applicant on page 1015 of the PDF, I think it gives a sense of similar variances. I don't know if they were similar or not, but it gives a sense of changes to the, to the bylaw in that area. Having said that, I also want to mention that community planning was circulated this application and they and we didn't see any concern or any report from them so i just wanted to state that as well for record and you have a question oh sorry go ahead it was aligned with a book thank you um yes i uh, was looking at this i don't have a, a it's the same issues with the side yards or the front yard or even the height. But I do recognize that what is happening here is the existing house has a deck. That deck is now being converted into a two or three story building. And the, uh, added to that, and I'm looking at um, the site plan, uh, Perhaps to added to that, there is very little area in the backyard. Uh, got a 25 foot backyard, which is reasonable, but, but there's again, he's adding another deck to that. There's uh, no rear yard setback. There's no, can yeah. all be brought back. There's no rear yard setback, in, uh, in, Member Macaulay. So I just want to point that out. I, I'm not asking whether there is a setback in the rear yard. That's not being requested here. Yeah, that's correct. What that's what I want. What is being requested is the overall length of this building and the size of the building. And the overall length and size of the building is what is making that rear yard so small and impacting on the neighbor right behind. So okay. I don't know whether um, 
they can give some consideration to not uh, extending the building quite as far into the rear yard. There's no length. There's no. Concern. There's no variance to the length of the building. There's no variance to the depth. There's a lot coverage. There's a FSI. There is required side yard setback. There's a height. There are two two variances for the height under the old bylaw and the new bylaw. And then there's a um, height for the exterior portion of the main walls. Then there's number of stories and then the required setback for eaves. Uh, I understand uh, there may not be a rear yard setback. There is a coverage issue of 4.4% uh, versus 24% versus 33%. There is an F, uh, floor space index of 1.1 times the lot area versus 0 0.6. Now, you put that together, and what you're getting is a very big house. Okay. I hear you. I'm looking okay. at that and saying, yes, I, I looked at a lot of the, the pictures, and there are a lot of houses in corn, on this street and in the area that are big. I don't see any pictures of houses that have so little rear yard. Okay. And I think that's what the uh, the neighbor was trying to state as well. Yeah. All right, fair enough, okay. So what, we're, we're, what I'm thinking is if you're gonna scale back your, your, your lot area, I mean your uh, floor area and your lot coverage, you may as well scale it back on the rear and hopefully a little bit on the sides, just scale it down. This, this house is just too large for this property. Okay, fair enough. Um, we can't speak with the applicant because we're into committee right now. So having said that, any further comment? I think we've, we've really um, dealt with this item well. <laughs> Can I have a motion now? Member Saeed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh I will move the motion for uh, refusal of this application, uh, being the, the variances uh, in front of the committee today uh, are not minor, and in my opinion, they are not meeting the four test. Uh, therefore, I move the motion for refusal of this application. Okay, may I have a seconder, please? Member M? I'll second that motion, Madam Chair. All in favor of this motion? Motions carried, the application. Oh, member Gary. Gary, are you there? I don't think he was there for the whole item. So oh, that's why he switched off. Did. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So we have a motion, we have a seconder. All in favor of this motion? Sorry, could you do that again? Thank you. The motion carries, the application has been refused. Thank you for your time. We now move to item 28. Item 28 is 93 Heal Avenue. And uh, application to construct a two-story, a new two-story dwelling, and we have three variances. And we have with us Alexander Boros as the agent. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and committee. Alex Boros, I'm both the agent and the architect. Thank you, Alex. Uh, just um, bear with us for a few minutes. Um, I'm going to check if we have the neighbor who's registered in opposition, Mike Ben Dixon. Okay, so staff has advised me that Mike has not connected. Mike, if you're listening in and if you want to come and speak, please do so. We are going to be discussing this application for the next few minutes. All right. Um, Alex, um, would you like to make a presentation to the committee or would you rather um, dive right into the yeah. questions? Yeah, if I can just uh, very briefly sure. uh, go over the variances. We have five um, minutes, sir. Madam, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, so item number two, again, uh, that has to do with the uh, max uh, FSI. And this, uh, in this particular case, we are over in, in only 19 meters squared. That's approximately 200 square feet uh, as, a, as allowed uh, by the bylaw. And item number three, again, the side yard setback uh, that is being requested is 0.6 uh, meters, i.e. two feet in lieu of three feet. 
and that's only for the garage portion, i.e. again for the first 20 feet or so of that particular five yard setback. Thank you very much, Madam Chair of Committee. Okay, thank you, Alex. Uh, that was very efficient, appreciate that. Uh, members of the committee, any questions for Alex? I see none, okay. All right, I'm gonna check again uh, for the last time. Mike Ben Dixon, has he signed in? Okay, staff advises me that Mike has not signed in. He was registered to speak with us. If there are no further questions for Alex, uh, would you, um, let's take the matter into committee. Um, any comments or uh, are we ready with the motion? Member M, please go ahead. Um, Madam Chair, I do feel that this application is minor in nature. It's minor both numerically, and I, I don't really see there being too much of an impact. It's, it's only a small request above what is existingly permitted, and I put forward a motion of approval. Um, I see that there are urban forestry conditions. Is mm -hmm. the applicant aware of those conditions? Yes, I am. I'm, uh, yes, I am. Okay, perfect. So I put forward a motion of approval subject to the urban forestry condition. Okay, thank you. Seconder, Member Gary, go ahead. Yes, Madam Chair, I'll, I'll second the, that uh, motion for approval subject to the urban forestry conditions, yes. Okay, all in favor of this motion? The motion is carried. The application for 93 Hill Avenue has been approved subject to condition of urban forestry. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Madam Chair and committee. Thank you. Good night. Okay, the next one is item 31. Item 31 is uh, 3836 Elsmere Road. And I think this is the one where we would like to reorder um, the uh, applications so that we deal with the consents first and then the uh, associated minor variances later on. So having said that, staff correct me if I'm wrong, the application, the, sorry, the consent application number is B0013 slash 20 SC. That's correct. Okay, and um, committee members, I would like to move that ahead of um, the other uh, associated minor variance applications. Is that okay? Okay, perfect, let's move that. Item 31, 3836, we have Leslie Nicholas with us. Leslie is the owner and she has not signed in, okay. Harjinder Singh, the agent, has not signed in. Abhishek Rajgore, agent's representative, you are there with us? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank this you. Abhishek Rajgore. Can you all hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Thank you very much. And we have, just doing a roll call here, a resident who has registered to speak in opposition to Hung La. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. So thank you for your patience um, since this morning. Uh, just bear with us. I'm going to start with Abhishek Rajgor. So Abhishek, you have, uh, we have your consent application and the two uh, associated minor variance applications. Um, just before we proceed, uh, are you aware of community planning staff report recommending refusal for this application for severance? Yes, Madam Chair, um, I'm aware of this. Yeah. Okay, all right. So uh, would you like to make a presentation on this application or um, go ahead with the questions from the committee members? Um, yes, I would like to make a brief presentation. Sure, please go ahead. Okay. You have up to five minutes. Okay, first of all, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and the committee members. Uh, you guys have been very patient uh, for all this while. And so very quickly, we have, uh, as you can see, the uh, the, the consent application is to sever the lot into two parts so that two houses can be made. Um, the reason, the main primary reason to do that is that the existing house, which is uh, significantly uh, has, a, has a lot frontage of 22.86 meters, and the house is quite old, which, is, which requires significant re repair structurally and also aesthetically. Considering for the fact that there is a tree which actually is so close to their rear yard, to the rear wall, that it, the roots have been coming to the basement, uh, and that has been a big, big inconvenience for the family. Moreover, the family uh, is basically growing; they have two kids, 
the owner's intention is to have the two houses next to each other so that they she can or he can they actually give it to the kid for their own use that is the primary purpose of this plan uh, of this severance and right now the, the toronto market is uh, so hot and the owner has clearly explained the financial situation that they are in that it would be not very good idea for them to uh, go out and get two properties but rather just have you utilize this entire lot which is actually quite huge for them um, and and make sizable amounts of uh, of uh, to and if you can i don't know if i'm so i can speak about the variances as of now yes please go ahead yes, because yeah i just wanted to reorder on the agenda to speak to the consent first yeah. that's all it is but but you're absolutely all correct right. we will deal with the consent and the minor variances together all right so yeah if as you can see the the minimum lot frontage required for for this particular lot and the zone is actually the one that's existed on the day of the enactment of this bylaw mm -hmm. so which means that the, uh, uh, as such that is not a minimum figure we understand that because of this uh, right now the lot area would become 11.43 meters for each of the two lots uh, this in turn reduces the lot areas also but it is also imperative to note that uh, after the proposed two houses we have the the heights are within the bylaw the parking has been sufficed uh, even after the severance of the two houses we are not reaching the lot coverage so it's not that we are we are actually taking up too much of the of the lot in terms of making these houses and as i said before the the only purpose uh, is that the owner can actually accommodate uh, their kids and next to each other and so that they can settle there and their plan is to just live there and you know, live there peacefully next to each other in different houses, which is a more viable option for them rather than spending hundreds and thousands of dollars in redoing the house and maybe adding another story, which is possible actually on this house. But because the house is so uh, wide that it does not actually su suit their purpose and their needs. So uh, it would be very, very appreciated that uh, this matter can be co considered um, before you and we are asking that permission that because we understand the lot frontage is not that much but uh, owing to the size and configuration of the lot uh, we have done our best to give justice to both the the planning uh, scenario of the city and uh, considering the requirement of the of the occupants over there okay thank you very much um thank you so you said you mentioned that the your client is not pursuing a, a bigger house, but but there is a um, variance for the maximum permitted floor area. Yes, madam. Yes, madam speaker. That's correct because after making the two houses, we have proposed the uh, areas of, of those houses to go, and which is why it's exceeding. And uh, if you if you check the exception fourteen sixty two a one. Uh, for the chapter of the chapter 900.3 mm -hmm. it states that the FSI can be uh, lesser of 0 0.6 or 204 square meters of the of the bigger lot but now because the lots have been reduced uh, the FSI changes down and which is why currently we are sitting at 0 0.69 so it from 204 square yeah so that is that is where the numbers are playing a bit tricky here which okay. is why it looks like that. But it, yeah, but but that has to do with the lot area. The 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 the, the let's say should this con consent go through, the FSI is based on the the lot area that will be created, small, right? Yes. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. So so there's there's always an opportunity to adhere to the permitted floor area, which in this case I understand this is what your client wishes to do, but I think. Um, you know, there's you don't have to increase the GFA. It's just that what your client wishes to. So that's fair enough. Uh, members of the committee, any questions for uh, Abhishek? Okay, I see none. All right, um, Abhishek, we are going to move to speaking with the neighbor, Tu Hung Law or Tu Hung Law. Yep, yeah, uh, Tu Law. At 11 Zaf Avenue. Uh, hello, Madam Chair and, and Council. I just wanted to um, just got bumped up. Discuss about uh, the 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 property being split next to our our yard. And the issue with that is that um, as it backs onto our yard, if he's planning to build two more houses there, it's really going to 
have the house back right up onto our yard because the the depth of the property is very short. Um, I understand he wants to split both of them, and those are eventually going to be backyards. But you know, the the we have two large trees that are right near there, and the, if they want to do the houses there, it's going to back right onto the lot, and we're going to have a lot of shade onto our yard, um, as well as the privacy factor as well. Um, and I'm not sure in in the area that we're in right now, the the lot size is pretty standard for our area. I've never seen something so small like that. If, if I can just clarify, sir, um, are you the corner lot on Zaf and? Um... Uh, no, I'm the oh. one right beside the corner lot. So in his in his backyard, it would be facing our yard. Sorry, could you which one? Sorry, that that one. Okay. Uh, the second the second uh, house on Zaf. Okay. The second house on Zaf. Okay, got it. Okay, perfect. Okay, carry on. Um, is there anything else you would like to add? Um, no, no, I just object to this. And, you know, I, I don't want to see this being built in an older community like we have right now. Okay, so you have concerns with the, the consent application, right? You have a concern with the severance? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. So the minor variances come after the fact, but you have concern with the consent as at this time. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, members of the committee, any questions for um, the resident? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, I'd just like to say I echo his concerns about the size of that lot. Um, anything on the north side of Ellesmere, just there's nothing in this kind of configuration. And I support both what he, with that, what Matthew had said as well as what planning staff have written in their report that this is just not in keeping with um, with the community and could destabilize the community. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> that was a comment, okay. No questions though, okay. I would now go back to Abhishek. Abhishek, are you in? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, I would thank, thank the gentleman for uh, his objection and, and the comment later. Uh, so my answer for that would be, uh, I understand the height uh, could be a concern for, for the gentleman, but it is also imperative to note that because just because there will be two houses, that that is simply not uh, one of the reason because even the height problem can still exist with one house being there, if at all a second story is added onto the current, current house. So the so the so the objection where uh, where height will be a problem can can exist either ways, even with or without the severe one. Also, it is imperative to note that we have uh, it is we also have support letters from both the neighbors of this uh, property on the either side. However, due to uh, technical issues, it probably could not get uh, registered over there. But uh, both the neighbors uh, have like the, on the either sides they are supporting this. That is one thing uh, that I would I would like to reiterate. And so, high, high concern, as I as I clearly explained, that if that problem exists, I mean, if, if you call that a problem, it will exist irrespective of the severance. Okay. And also uh, the height, sorry, sorry, the last one, the height for this particular zone is allowed at 10 meters. We are very well under that uh, the, the zoning bylaw which allows. We are not even asking a minor variance in terms of heights. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was uh, a little confused. You're not asking for a height variance on any of the two new builds, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, all right. Any questions for Abhishek at this time, members of the committee, before we take the matter into committee? Member Saeed, please go ahead, your question. Abhishek, uh, uh, I haven't heard much about your, um, your elaboration on the size of the uh, lot, which is uh, actually a main concern for me, uh, both in terms of the frontage of the lot and also the lot uh, area, because the, the information which I am getting from the community planning, this is the smallest lot, would be the smallest lot in the area, and uh, there is no other such lot even close to that, because this is so small and it will be really, uh, as a member M said, it's going to be destabilizing the characteristic in the whole area. So I would like to have your comments on that uh, because that is my main concern at this point. 
Um, thank you, Member Sai. This that's a very good question. Um, so what I would like to explain for this is that yes, in the immediate context, it it is it is it, it is a smaller lot, but um, right across the street, if you notice, the the lot sizes are pretty much uh, smaller than this existing lot right now, and it's an entire row over there. And also interestingly, uh, literally two two twenty meters away, um, the address three seven six three Elsmere Road. Um, in 2017, the, uh, it was clear to uh, to be severed into two parts, um, which is like, uh, I'm, I know it's not on the same line, but it's on the opposite side, but it's literally two, 220 meters away from this lot. And 2017, um, I mean, I know that it shouldn't be considered uh, as the sole basis of a precedent, but, uh, and I didn't even bring this up on, until now, but uh, because of the lot sizes, I understand that uh, it could be the smallest in that immediate context, but if you look a little um, um, uh, away from this this lot and on the opposite side, there are considerable considerably smaller lots. Um, we understand the frontage again is not as big as uh, uh, it it is it reasonably should acceptable be, but owing to the overall frontage, which is twenty two point eight six. Uh, and divide that into two parts is what best what we could uh, do. And that's why we are asking for your permission today to allow us in this particular case. And especially when this is not a business plan uh, and this is for their family family's uh, benefit. Thank you, Member Sai. Okay, thank you. So no further questions or comments? I, I do have one more comment. The, the area to the south was part of a subdivision application, which had its own zoning bylaw amendment. It wasn't done through minor variances such as this. And it had the proper review to enable sort of the reduction in, in lot sizes, et cetera. The, the, it's not necessarily comparable in my eyes. It's a completely different zone category than what we're looking at here. It shouldn't necessarily be used as precedent, in my opinion. Okay, thank you for that comment. All right, um, I am going to do the last check. Any closing remarks, uh, Abhishek, before we take the matter into committee? Um, I think, no, that, that will be everything. Um, and I appreciate all of your uh, comments and your suggestions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Members of the committee, I, I, I now take the matter into committee. Um, any comment? Yes, Member McCauley, go ahead. Yes, I've um, looked at this application. This is a, an old part of Highland Creek. Um, as Member Ames said, uh, there are subdivisions where there are new uh, uh, development, uh, 20 years old, if you call it new, uh, but it's uh, considered as an entire subdivision where everything in that area, and you can see that very easily here, everything in that area is consistent with its neighbor and with its neighbor to the rear. Between Zap and Meadowvale Road, it is a considerably different area. That green space is actually a water course. Um, and this is an area that has maintained its, uh, its older, bigger lot. But if we proceed to say that this lot can be 11 meters, it'll be the smallest lot in the area. And it starts to destabilize what is happening in that area. Um, it becomes a, a, a problem of destabilizing a, a very stable community. Want to keep in mind also that Ellesmere Road here is a very, is anticipated to be a very major road um, and to have a, a fast bus lane along this route. So it's, a, it's an area that you want to be very careful what you're doing in terms of change. So, bearing all of that in mind, um, I would like to put forth a motion if we're ready. I'll oh, just, wait, I'll just, I'll there. just check for the last time. Any, any other further comments, members of the committee? Before, okay, Member McCauley, please go ahead. 
I put forth a motion that this application be refused, that the consent application be refused on the basis that it doesn't uh, maintain the character of the area and will tend to, to um, create uh, an, an instability in this area in opposition to what the official plan is looking for, which is maintaining stable residential areas. So I recommend refusal of the consent. I also would recommend confusal of both variance applications in that the lot sizes are not in character with the immediate surrounding. Okay, have a seconder please. Member Saeed. I second the uh, motion for refusal of this application. All in favor of this motion? Motion carries the application uh, for consent and the associated minor variance applications for 3836 Elsmere Road have been refused. Thank you for your time, Abhishek. Did we, did we talk to, we did, we don't. That's okay. Sorry about that. Okay, we are going to move to the item 32, 27 Butterworth um, Avenue. And I'm gonna do the same for item number 32, which is uh, a consent application and associated minor variance application. So just gonna reorder the numbering and uh, deal with the um, consent application B0028 slash 20 SC first, and then the associated minor variance applications, but we can certainly uh, talk about the three applications together because they are um, connected. We have Yasu Somalingam. Yasu, you're with us. Yes, Madam Chair and the committee members. Okay, thank you. Just stay with us for a moment. And we have David Matheson listed as registered speaker. David, you're with us? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Yasu Somalingam. So Yasu, we have your application before us. And would you like to make a presentation or go right into the questions? I'll go right into the question, but um, I just uh, want to state that um, this uh, the, this is a series of development happening in the neighborhood, and we were working together with the planning department on this application, and um, we did a number of um, 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 revisions and proposals according to them, and then we are here today in the meeting to get um, your committee's approval based on this. Um, Anyway, I'll, I'll stay for uh, go to uh, the questions. Okay, thank you. I just want to make a note here that uh, Member M has left um, the meeting. So just wanted to put that on record. All right, sorry, Yasu. So, um, okay, yes, we see that. Um, we did not receive any report from community planning. We have staff comments from uh, engineering. We have staff comments from uh, urban forestry and ravine protection. And I'm assuming there were conditions there and you've looked at those conditions. Yasu? Yes, Madam Chair, we agree to those conditions. Okay, all right. Okay, now members of committee, any questions for Yasu? Member Gary, please go ahead. Sorry. Um, yes, Ryan, I, I noticed an engineering report asking them for a, a road widening, and just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that and are you agreeable with that? Uh, yes, um, um, we, are, we are agreeable to that, and uh, they, they wanted a rounded corner there too, so we... we Yes, we do agree for that, and then we'll be doing the we'll be meeting those conditions. Oh, and that's a very good point, Member Gary. Uh, Yasu, I'm assuming that you've taken that into account for your lot um, calculations. Uh, yes, that that um, we have revised our calculation based on that uh, rounding. 
Okay. So that's that's a thing we back and forth and then we revised our numbers based on that. Okay, so the variances that we have before us um, as they relate to... I guess there's no lot... Is there a lot area and lot coverage or frontage requirements? There isn't any. Okay, all right, that's fine. Yeah, okay, Keep yes, to yes, we are asking for the variance for the lot frontage. The lot frontage doesn't change. Mm -hmm. The whether I give the round or not, the lot frontage uh, uh, doesn't change, uh, but the minimum lot area, uh, that a slight change uh, uh, on, 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 on this. Got it, okay, all right. Okay, so you've looked at it for sure. Okay, now we're going to yeah. move to uh, David Matheson. David is the resident who's registered to speak in opposition. Yes, I'm here. David, please go ahead. You have five minutes and please advise us of your concerns. Uh, my concern is, it can be briefly stated, that I, I'm, I'm concerned about the preservation of a large mature tree in front of 27 Buff Butterworth Avenue. I'm also concerned about how the health and integrity of the tree will be protected during the proposed construction activity. Okay. Uh, do you have that, any? That, okay. Carry on. Yeah. No. That's that's basically my point. Oh, so you have concern with that tree that is being shown on the screen, um, and the yes. and the health and safety of that tree during construction. Um, just want to confirm with you: Do you have any concerns with the proposed consent and the minor variance application? No, I don't. Oh, okay. All right. That was easy. <laughs> I will uh, go back to Yasu now. Oh, before I do, members of the committee, any questions for David? Okay. I see none. Yasu? Um, yes, Madam Chair. Um, um, uh, yes, we have thought about that. That's the main reason uh, we were putting the driveways on, on the um, outside of these two lots and then having the walkway in the middle so we can save the tree. Typically, we show the driveways in the middle together, away from the intersection, uh, but just because of the tree, to save the tree, we put it outside. Anyhow, still, I still had to go for urban forestry approval on this. Uh, I'm aware of that. And we'll be, pro uh, we will be providing uh, proper um, um, uh, um, um, Abra's report on this, uh, and then we will be um, um, uh, submitting that for urban forestry approval. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I, we have put all the foundations and uh, 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 all um, the, um, the, um, the construction away from that, uh, the tree, and uh, the existing driveway will be preserved to uh, slightly extend it uh, 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 um, other than that, there's, there's no uh, uh, big uh, damage to the existing ground. So this is a private tree, correct? Yeah, that's a private tree. If you look at the side fan, that's a one uh, front of... Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it, yeah. It's in the yeah. middle. Yeah. It's, 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 it's nearly in the middle, but the front of the second lot from the corner. Okay, and... Um, you will be in discussions with urban forestry to protect that tree and mitigation measures will be in place. Uh, tree protection would be in place for the, um, during the construction. That's correct. So there'll be tree protection and most likely uh, we'll be doing uh, not only tree protection uh, like, you know, vertically and also horizontally during construction with uh, thick plywood on the floor okay. um, uh, during construction and sort of thing. So that's a standard procedures yeah. for yeah. urban forestry approval. Okay, so those are the TPZ measures. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to uh, go back to the uh, committee members. Any questions for Yasu before we take the matter into committee? Remember, this is a consent application and there are two associated minor variance applications with it. Any questions, any comment, any clarification at this time? Yasu has looked at the conditions and he, have, he has no concerns or questions regarding the conditions. Okay, all right, I will take the matter into committee now. Who wants to go first? Member Macaulay. I like consent and I like 
the plans of subdivision. I've done a lot of them in my past. I was looking at this application on uh, Butterworth, and initially I was concerned, well, I'm always concerned when I see a larger lot divided in half. But in this particular case, I'm looking at the pattern of what has been developed in the neighborhood, and I see that we've got a number of lots on Butterworth at Mystics that are roughly the same, at uh, the uh, Stalin uh, is also the same. I'm, I was looking at the um, um, lot plan here. So, yes, you can see there, smaller lots, small lot in here, lots, again, being divided in half and creating a pattern that, that is fairly consistent. On that basis, I uh, am um, satisfied with this application. Uh, for our consent, I believe that uh, it meets the requirements. I uh, will um, provide that as comments and wait to see if any of my other members have any comments. Okay, members of the committee, any comments? I see none. All right. Then uh, may I please have a motion? Member McCauley. Madam Chair, I would recommend approval of the consent application for Buttersworth subject to the standard conditions and subject to uh, the comments of engineering planning and uh, forestry. I would also recommend approval of the two variance applications. I note that the variances are predominantly, again, when we're talking about lots, the um, the lot area is smaller than what is uh, already permitted, but again, it is consistent with what is happening in that area. Therefore, I recommend approval of the consent subject to conditions and of the two variances. Two variance applications, okay. All right, so we have a motion on the floor for approval uh, subject to the conditions um, that have been stated for the consent application and the two associated minor variance applications. May I have a seconder, please? Member Gary? Madam Chair, uh, I'll second uh, that approval, approving the, uh, the uh, consent to sever and uh, the two variance applications. Okay, thank you. All in favor of this motion? The motion carries application for uh, consent and associated minor variance application for um, 27 Butterworth uh, Avenue have been approved subject to conditions as stated. Thank you. Okay, so we've dealt with item 32 and last on the list, item 33, it is 266 to 268 Kennedy Road. There are five applications before us. Again, very similar to the previous. There is a consent application and there is four minor variance applications associated because the application for consent deals with creation of, um, in total, four lots, um, uh, one for each lot, so one retained, one conveyed for each of the lots. So I have with us um, Yasu Somalingam. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, Sophia again. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm available. Okay. All right. No, so uh, the same format. Do you want to make a presentation? Oh, before I do that, I need to check. Henry Cadet is the resident who had signed in. Okay. He is not signed in. So we had registered Henry Cadet. Uh, who was uh, who had some questions about this application, but I don't see uh, staff has advised he's not signed in. So Henry, if you're listening in, and if you wish to speak with us, please connect. We will be spending a few minutes on this application. So Yasu, over to you. Uh, any presentation um, or questions? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I'll go questions directly, but I just want to give a brief history on this application. There's a, uh, they originally it was applied for five lots, four being faced on uh, Candy Road and one uh, faced on Newborn Avenue at the rear. 
but uh, planning department did not like those uh, application uh, for five lots. So we revised the application to fulfill the planning uh, requirements to go with the existing lot patterns and the new lots being created in the neighborhood. Um, uh, it's all facing Tikandi Road. So uh, we went with the application for four lots instead of five lots. Um, so that uh, four lots, uh, basically, um, uh, we uh, pretty much um, um, uh, in, 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 in line with the other applications in the same neighborhood. And going back to my neighbor who wanted to speak on this, mainly they were asking about the fence height. Uh, they were talking about nine meter fence height. Probably they were instead of nine feet, maybe they might put nine meter or something like that. But the standard fence height allowed by the bylaw, I think two meters will be um, placed uh, on the property line. Other than that, uh, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a straightforward application, which uh, in the, the new developments being created in, in Candy Road and these, these neighborhoods. Okay, all right, thank you for that. Yes, I do see his written submission, and this is from Mr. Henry Cadet. He had questions about the fence. Uh, if the fence, if the right fence on 266 Kennedy Road will be as high as 9.515 meters. He says, if it's yes, then I do not have any objection. So is that going to be 9.15 meters? Uh, not really, because okay. the bylaw allows only up to two meters fence. So um, uh, uh, I don't think we can put nine. I think maybe he might have nine point one five feet or something. Feet, okay. It Makes won't sense. be nine. Yeah, even nine point nine feet, we cannot do that. I think bylaw permits only two meter high, which is about six six around seven feet maximum. Okay, so whatever the bylaw permits. Not that it is a matter of our of the variance application, but I wanted to, uh, because he's not been able to connect. So I just wanted to put it out there. And uh, for record, yeah. I would also like to state that we have an email um, from um, another uh, gentleman, Mr. Earl Durham, that uh, his written, well, not his written, but his message was conveyed. That's okay. I know, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. So um, now I'm going to go to the committee members and speak to them about any comments or questions for the applicant. Member McCauley, please go ahead. You're on mute. Sorry, I have a question for the applicant. It's coming from the staff report and it's dealing with the detached garage and rear detached a detached lot and rear detached garage. Can you explain what that issue is, please? Putting the detached garage, sorry, uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. yes, I can. Okay, so the on this corner lot, we had to put one detached garage on the side as for the planning to come. And originally, we put the garage at the front uh, but they they requested us to put the garage in the back because um, they they uh, 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 and we had to switch a garage to the back. So when we switch a garage, the planning do not want to utilize that uh, lot coverage uh, into the building area. So they don't. So that's the reason they 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 won't. Even though the garage is coming standalone, which is increasing the lot coverage uh, for that purpose. We cannot use that uh, extra lot coverage into the building area. So that, that's what the planning wanted to make sure. And we agreed to that. So you are putting a, a detached garage in the rear lot. And I can understand that. Um, but they, the, the garage has to... Can you help me here? The garage ha uh, can only be a, a certain size. Mm -hmm. Is that what the planning com uh, community planning is requesting? Okay, so we we are increasing the co coverage for for the um, uh, purpose uh, because we had to put a detached garage there. We, when we put a detached garage there, 
uh, I cannot use that extra coverage which uh, planning is allowing me uh, to utilize that because of the, the garage is taken out from the building. I can basically okay. I cannot use that area space into a living space inside the building. That, that's that's what they wanted to make sure, and we we agreed to that condition. Okay. All right. Thank you for explaining that. Okay. And any further questions, Member Said? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so my question is pertaining to the same. Uh, what you were talking about the garage coverage and the lot coverage so looking at the consent application if we it should the committee approve the consent application there will be condition from the community planning that uh, the maximum lot coverage area will be 35 percent right and the remaining is for the garage and you agreed to that am i right yes okay now my second part i'm a little bit uh, not very really clear while looking at the variances uh, for 268 part one uh, the variance uh, says that the proposed lot coverage is 41.8 percent all right so that will be so even if we approve the consent application with the condition of the community planning that will be a decision binding you to keep the lot uh, lot coverage 35 percent but the variance over here could not be approved uh, if it is 41.8 percent which one are you looking at um, member said it's a 268 uh, part one the variance for 268 part one okay yeah which says that the maximum lot coverage which is 33 but actually is Community planning has already allowed 35%, right, in the consent application. Which variance number is that? In the cons consent application, if you look at the conditions huh? given by the community planning. No, no, no. You're referring to an application. You're referring to an application, okay? So you're saying 268, part one, right? Part one, and it's uh, referring to one of the variance which is about the lot coverage variance. I understand that but I'm looking at the notice I'm looking at the public notice here 268 public hearing notice uh, for part two Hold on. let me go back to my papers if I uh, I missed the variance exact variance number over here but in chapter five which uh, refers to the permitted maximum lot coverage is 33 percent Proposed lot coverage is 41.8 percent. I'm not following through. I need some help here, staff. Uh, do, do you understand? What, or maybe committee members, are you following this one? Like, which which is it? Maybe I need some help. So, member Said, okay, let's let's go to the agenda. If you go to the agenda okay. and you pull up page 1355, of the agenda. So that is the listed variances for 268 Kennedy Road, um, part one. Right. Okay, so which variance are you referring to? Hold on, let me check it, double check it, yeah. Madam Chair, I was looking at page 1335, which is the comments that is 266 okay hello okay. can yes. we go back to the community planning comments on that sure hello yes yasu do you want to say something yes okay so what's happened is this we asked for a variance for the coverage of 42 percentage when we put a garage inside the 42 percentage works fine so when, when, as per the county planning, we had to take the garage out and put it a standalone garage in the back rear yard. So the car, the, for the corner lot, the car will be parked uh, from the back. So when we put that, uh, that, when we put the thing, so the community planning is saying that as per the page two uh, item uh, five, 
What they are saying is that they are allowing the coverage for the house for 30% days, and rest of the coverage will be utilized only for the garage. Correct. So instead of they, they instead of they allowing for 42 percent, if I put a, if I put a 42 percentage, I can't separate the garage and put a standalone garage there. Got but it. what they are in, in, in instead of that, what they are saying is that okay, we'll allow the the coverage for the house 33 uh, percent. Um, um, the uh, they they allowing for the 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 footprint, but the coverage will be more than that because we are putting a standalone garage. So that standalone garage will be covered in the rear. Okay. Okay. So actually, there is there is not going to be an overlap, but the areas has been specified by uh, for the building and the garage, right? Thirty five percent and the remaining is for the garage, right? The 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 extra coverage they are allowing for the the um, the um, the garage. Okay. I, I think I understand that when the garage is in part of the house, it's all one and one uh, set of coverage. It's when it's uh, in this case, you've got a house and a garage separately that it uh, messes up the coverage. And staff have uh, agreed because they want the garage separately because of the access to that uh, that garage. I think I understand. I agree. It is confusing. Yeah, you are right. You are right, Member M. This is this was. Okay, so just bear with me uh, for a moment. I'm I'm getting one thing checked. So, um, Colin, can you help me with this? So, if you go to application number A one zero three slash twenty C. A one zero three. Slash 23, just the notice, okay? Can you confirm, is there any, um, let me pull it up. Oh, I lost it. A103, is there any um, lot coverage? Is there any lot coverage variance there in that list? There's there's a lot coverage variance. Um, it's um, variance number five. For A one zero three twenty SC, there's none on the public notice. I'm sorry, on A zero one three. I'm sorry. Um, um, A zero one three dash twenty SC. My apologies. Um, there isn't any. So what's throwing off is that a reference to a variance in staff report, which refers to forty one percent, and there's no variance for forty one percent. It's through the chair. There is one for um, A A zero one zero six. But the staff report refers to A one zero three. That's correct. Um, yeah. So staff report has a reference to an incorrect variance, which is not available on the public notice. That's correct. Um, the um, the public the but the public hearing notice itself. Yes. Um, is is correct. Yes. So really, um, I think, should the committee um, wish to, um, um, I guess, w um, the committee um, could. Yes, you're right. The um, the variances. Yeah, it's refer. It's the the title is referring to the um, the incorrect property. It's the the incorrect part. Because um, the um, the the lot the um, the lot the, um, the the lot coverage that's being applied for is actually on um, on an, on um, another application. Which application is that? Can you tell me? So if you look at um, item um, item thirty three um, a one hundred six. A one hundred six. Okay, let me take a look at a one hundred six. If you look at the minor variance okay, number just five. Bear just bear with me. Sure. A one o six. Um, hello. Yes. Hi, Aso.
Yes. That's where it is. But actually, um, Yasso, do you have, would you like to speak? Yes, but I wanted to clarify here. Uh, the, this is only for the corner lot. Mm. So the corner lot, the planning won't a standalone garage in the back. Mm -hmm. So there's the still the, the, the variance that we applied for the coverage is going to be uh, um, exceeding because of this, this, this reason. So the, the planning is allowing me is that you go for 35% for the coverage for the building and then put additional car, garage on the rear yard, it, it, which whatever it's needed to put one single gar garage as per the zoning at the back. To, so okay. the okay. variance will be approved today only for the corner lot is that 35% lot coverage for the house plus coverage required for a one detached garage in the back. So that would that be the uh, remainder? So, of, so would that be the remainder of forty one point eight minus thirty five percent? We originally asked for forty one point five percent. I understand that. I understand that, Yasu. Yeah. So you asked for forty one point eight. Community planning came back and said you could. We will grant you thirty five percent for the for the dwelling and the remainder, which is the difference between 41.8 and 35 percent that would be for your garage that's correct because otherwise if we approve 41 i can still have a garage and i can increase whether the the coverage on the house so the planning wanted to make uh, okay. 35 percent is maximum coverage for the house okay and we can have one detached garage in the back Okay, so I think I, I found, figured that out. I think so. One thing that threw threw us all off was an incorrect reference to a staff report. Uh, sorry, the 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 item number, the application number. So that is to be corrected. So that staff report is for um, application number A zero one zero six dash twenty SC. Through the oh. chair, there there isn't there there. Um What's what's kind of it, that's correct in terms of there is an error in the staff report in the um, in the agenda package you've got in terms of the bookmark, even though it refers that the item for um, a one hundred five um, is is um, the bookmark is actually referring to errone erroneously referring to a one hundred a zero one hundred six, but it actually is the application in question is A0105 slash <laughs> 20. So, um, so if, should the committee wish to approve it, reference A0105 slash 20. Got it, okay. And, and don't refer to the community planning. No, um, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so we are, just to get the record straight, we are dealing with A, as it related to the community planning uh, recommendation, it was for A0105 slash 20 SC, which has um, variance number five uh, re related to the lot coverage. So the maximum permitted lot coverage is 33%. The proposed lot coverage is 41.8%. What community planning is saying is recommending that should the committee approve the variance, the um, up only 35% of the 41.8% shall be allocated to the main dwelling. The balance, which would be the difference between 41.8 and 35%, that would be allocated to the garage. Okay, that's, that's what it is. That's correct. Okay, so we got that right. Yes. So my, 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 my suggestion to the committee is um, you, I think, yeah, just have, have a specific, don't, don't, no. Don't refer to the um, staff report. Yeah. Okay. All right. We will make our own. Yes. If 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 we were to approve it, we will uh, do our own language for that condition. Okay. All right, committee members. Any further questions for Yasu? Member Gary. I just mentioned there's an engineering report and looking at his reference plan. So there appears to be road widenings on Kennedy Road, and I take it he's okay with that and there's also also uh, a wish to have a particular sidewalk uh, size uh, as per uh, an earlier memo of uh, february 24th uh, 
just on the um, road widenings and the sidewalk uh, size then is uh, is the applicant's fine with that uh yes um we are okay with that yes we were back and forth working on that and revising our um, coverages and everything based on that yes okay thank you member gary for that any any further comment i see none all right let's move uh, ahead and take the matter into committee <clears throat> so committee members we have the consent application and we have the four uh minor variance applications um, for the created lots, for the conveyed and the retained lots. We also had a staff, uh, community planning staff report um, recommending a, cert a condition for one lot for your um, consideration. And that was related to the lot coverage being allocated to certain use. All right, so if there are no comments or questions, may I please have a motion? Don't refer to the community planning staff report. Just if, if you were to consider that condition, just use your uh, language. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Staff has a comment. Can I, um, through, um, through the chair, if I, you may wish to make this easy, um, easier should the committee wish to um, approve the consent and associated minor variances. Um, it could be, you, you may want to um, do it separately, separate, um, separate motions for each of the, um, the individual applications. That's a very good idea. And really, I think um, the, um, the, for, the, um, for the consent, if the committee wishes to approve it, it would be um, approval subject to the um, ECS and urban forestry um, conditions. And then the um, the remainder um, of the associated minor variances would be um, just approval, with the exception of a zero one hundred five, which would be approved subject to um, the lot. Basically, the lot coverage of the dwelling be limited to a maximum of thirty five percent of the remaining lot coverage allocated towards the detached garage. Okay, thank you for for specifying that. So let's start with the first application for consent B zero zero one nine dash twenty SC. Committee members, motion on that application. Member McCauley, please go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, I recommend approval of consent application B001920SC with respect to 266 to 268 Kennedy Road, subject to engineering, uh, development engineering conditions the urban forestry conditions and any uh, and any other uh, standard other standard conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All in favor of uh, oh, may I have a seconder, please? Member Saeed. Madam Chair, I second the motion uh, subject to the condition as stated. All in favor of this motion? All in favor of this motion? <laughs> Member McCauley, I need to see your hand, please. And you get a vote. Okay. Motion is carried. The application for consent, um, B0019 20 SC, has been approved subject to conditions. Okay. Now we are going to go to uh, item uh, application A010. 0102-20SC for part one. May I have a motion, Member McCauley? Okay, I'm going to try. Part one, I believe, is the um, is the one with the garage. No, so no, no, no. I'll, I'll let you know, Member McCauley. I will let you know the one with the garage. Okay. So this is this is for 266. This is a 0102-20SC. We're only dealing with this one. This has not. This doesn't have the garage. I have to go back and look at that. Mm. There are no conditions um, here that were recommended. So, um, one hundred two twenty is part five on the plan. 
No, Mr. Member Macaulay. Member Macaulay, I think to keep it a little simple, if you could uh, consider just referring to the application number, which is A0102 20 SC. Fine. I'll let someone else. You let someone else do it? You're not putting forward a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, I'm willing to put forward a, a motion to approve the first uh, variance uh, <clears throat> AO10220SC. And um, I think any other conditions are really covered under the uh, under the consent. So I think I can just uh, move that that variance be approved. May I have a seconder, please? Member Said, sec Member Said seconds the motion. All in favor of this motion? Motion carries. Application A0102 20SC has been approved. We now go to the next item, A103 20SC. May I have a motion, please, for A0103 20SC? Well, Madam Chair, I, I would move uh, again for approval of this uh, second variance, AO 103 20SC, and move approval uh, of that, uh, of that uh, minor variance application. Thank you. May I have a seconder, please? Go ahead, Member Said. Madam Chair, I uh, second the approval of this application. Okay. All in favor of this motion? Motion carries. The application A0103-20SC has been approved. The next item, our file number, A0104-20SC. May I have a motion on this application, A0104-20SC? Yes, Madam Chair, I'll move uh, approval of that uh, variance. All right, may I have a seconder, please? Madam Chair, I second the motion for approval. Thank you. All in favor of this motion? Motion carries. Application A0104-20SC has been approved. We now move to the last application, a 0105 dash 20 SC, and that is the one that has the garage on it and had the community planning staff report recommendation. Staff? Okay, all right. So is A0105 dash 20 SC, may I have a motion? And would you like to address uh, this one? Because I think this is the one with the garage. Thank you. Um, could staff tell me what page that is, uh, item is on, please? It's, um, if you take a look at the recommendation in the staff report, it's on, um, it's on page 1335. Or, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, it's recommendation number one. Okay. Recommend approval of variance 103.20 no. SC. No, Anne, it's not it's not 103. It is um A zero five. It's A zero one zero five. So the staff report is 
uh, addressing the wrong lot. That's correct. We figured that out. It was a wrong reference to the file number. We figured it out, and the file number is A0105. File number is A01. Zero, zero five. You mean 105 SC? That's correct. A0105 dash 20 SC. Okay. I think it's getting very late and we've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> I recommend approval of this uh, variant subject to item number No, just, just refer to the condition. Item number 5 where the proposed lot coverage is 41.8% of the lot area of which a maximum of 33% can be devoted to the dwelling unit. I think it's 35% of the dwelling unit. Okay. So, Member McCauley, if I can help you here, all you got to do is just read that condition without referring to anything. Which condition? The condition that has been recommended in community planning staff report. Without making a reference that this is a condition from that report, just say s approval subject to the condition that the lot coverage of the dwelling be limited to a maximum of 35% and the remaining lot coverage be allocated towards the detached garage. But we haven't given an approval for the remaining uh, lot coverage. That was why I was trying to get the remaining lot coverage approval. No, Member McCauley. Never mind. So, Member McCauley, this, so on this application, A10105, we have a variance, which is item number um, five. And item number five is requesting 41.8% lot coverage. Okay. Community planning has recommended that we do not have any issues with 41.8% except that the applicant would only utilize 35% of that permission for the dwelling unit and the remainder or the balance of, of that co lot coverage would be allocated to the garage. All right. So in principle, the approval is there for the lot coverage of 41.8%, but it's just telling you how you need to divvy it up. So you need to put forward a motion now. Oh, you want someone else to do it? I'll let someone else do it. Uh, well, okay. uh, Madam Chair, yes, with, uh, with your help, Mr. Sir Nat. I would move uh, approval for the variance application number AO 105 slash 20 SC. And uh, that has a, a total lot coverage of 41.8%, with 35% of that being uh, assigned to the dwelling and the remainder for the proposed garage. Thank you. May I have a seconder, please? Member McCauley's, please go ahead. I will second that. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. All in favor of this motion? The motion is carried. The application A0105 slash 20SC has been approved subject to the condition as stated. Thank you very much. That brings us to the end, uh, the, um, end of the agenda. I would just go back to the, so there are no more items um, to be discussed today. Under other business, there is no other business. Through the chair, there was just um, one item um, just to um, advise um, the committee 
of um, oh yes of um, a T lava peel in 4A to, for 1373 Birchmount Road, which was a which um, was appealed by a neighbor, and also 4B, which is um, a T lab decision and order that was issued recently for seven Broadmead uh, consent application. It's attached for your information. Okay, thank you very much for that information. We have read that. And date of the next meeting, April 22nd. Need a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'm sure I would move that we adjourn this meeting. All right, Member McCauley puts forward the motion. Member, sorry, Member Gary puts forward the motion. Member McCauley is seconded. All in favor? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone, for your patience today. Yeah. Have a good evening. Congratulations, everyone. Yes, almost a 12-hour day. <laughs> yes. Madam Chair, could you, uh, just for my note purpose, could you update me on item number 29? What, what was the decision? Just I'm taking my notes somewhere I missed on that. We need to adjourn the meeting. Sorry, member said I've been advised okay. because the